say once again, Shabbat Shalom to everyone. God bless you. We are happy to have uh, the opportunity to be under the sound uh, of the word. So I would like you all to turn with me, please, to the book of Psalms. We are studying through the book of Psalms. And uh, we have arrived now to Psalm 5. Mizmor Hey, Tehillim Hey, in Hebrew, Psalm 5. And I would like to read this psalm. This psalm is a, a, has a 12 verses, and I would like just to read the psalm, very important mizmor, uh, a psalm that really uh, helps us to appreciate the experiences that David have gone through, as well as in typology, prophetically speaking about the experience that our people of Israel will experience specifically during the tribulation days in a future day. It is also a picture, a lesson, object about the person of our Lord, Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah, and the experiences that David have gone through, that we see it in the life of Yeshua. And ultimately, this psalm is representing the, the cry and the experience that each and every one of us who are believers in any generation, uh, are seeking the help of the Lord in time of need. And so notice I'm reading Psalm 5. To the chief musician upon a nechilot, a psalm of David. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God, for unto thee will I pray. My voice shall thou hear in the morning. O Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee, and we look up. For thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness, Neither shall evil dwell with thee. The fools shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all the workers of iniquity. Thou shalt destroy them that speak a, a leasing. The Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. But as for me, I will come into thy house in the multitude of thy mercy. And in thy fear will I worship toward thy holy temple. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness. Because of mine enemies, make thy way straight before my face. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is very wickedness. Their throat is an open sepulchre. They flatter with their tongue. Destroy thou them, O God. Let them fall by their own counsel. Cast them out in a multitude of their transgression, for they have rebelled against thee. But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever uh, let them ever should for joy, because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor will thou compass him as with a shield. And I'm going to stop here with the reading of these uh, 12 uh, uh, verses. Actually, in the Hebrew text, the heading, beloved brothers and sisters, it is a really the first verse in the Hebrew Masoretic text. In fact, the first verse in the Hebrew scripture is to the chief musician upon Nechilot. Notice that in Hebrew, Lamanatseach el HaNechilot, Mizmor Le David. In fact, the first verse here, which is the heading in the English text, it is actually in the Hebrew text, it is the, the first verse, and you notice here, the word here, that David, notice that, to the chief musician upon Nechilot, the psalm of David, David, who wrote this psalm, is handing over to the 
chief musician that psalm for to put it into music and to sing it in the worship in the temple of Yerushalayim, where the nation of Israel will worship our God and praise him for who he is and for what he is doing on behalf of the nation of Israel. In fact, Psalm 5 is really a part of these psalms between the first messianic psalm in Psalm 2 and the second messianic psalm in Psalm 8. And in between Psalm 3, 4, 5, and 6, you have a cluster of psalms, of songs, of mizmorim that are really linked with one another. They are great lessons for us to learn, beloved uh, brothers and sisters, as we are looking over this very important psalm. Again, to remind you that when we read a psalm, first of all, we need to learn that this is applies to the person who wrote it. In this case, is David. Secondly, by in a prophetic sense, that psalm is speaking about Israel specifically in relationship to God during the future day when Israel will experience the the tra- the time of trouble we call it Jacob's trouble during the tribulation days the suffering that Israel as a nation will experience before Israel will turn back to the Lord as a nation and again thirdly he speaks about the Messiah Mashiach Yeshua and the sufferings of the Messiah as Pe- as Peter says the sufferings of the Messiah and the glory that should follow. He came once to suffer and die. He will come again to reign and to rule over this world. And of course, fourthly, it's applied to us as believers. In every generation, we go through trials and and challenges in our life, and we need the Lord's help. Uh, And and that's why we would pray like David and ask the Lord to help him. Now, you notice, beloved brothers and sisters, I would just jump for a moment to verse 10. And you notice in verse 10, it says very strong words that David is speaking against his enemy. In fact, this psalm is called the the first impercatory psalm. It is a psalm that is a prayer against David's enemies which we as believers doing the assembly, the church age, cannot pray like this. Listen to what David is saying. He's saying, destroy them, thou them, O Lord, O, o God. Let, the, let them fall by their own counsel. Cast them out in a multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against thee. In fact, in the Hebrew Tanakh, in the Psalms, there are various Psalms that are called imprecatory. It is a Psalms that are praying against the enemies of God, against our own enemies. There are quite a few Psalms that are uh, called imprecatory Psalms, in which the Psalmist is speaking and praying that evil, the judgment, will fall upon his enemies. This psalm, Psalm 5, is the first psalm out of the many, many psalms that we have that call imprecatory psalms. Prayers against the, the, the enemies of God's people for judgment from uh, the Lord. In fact, I would like you to turn to Psalm 69 for a moment. And you notice in Psalm 69 and verse 24, listen to what we read there. Psalm 69 is a messianic psalm that David as well was praying. But notice what we read in verse 24. It says there in verse 24, Pour out thine indignation upon them. Let thy uh, wrathful anger take hold of them. Notice this, again, it is an imprecatory psalm, is a psalm of judgment that the the person who pray is praying against the enemies, his own enemies. And that is not something that you and I are praying today as believers in Yeshua the Messiah, because Yeshua the Messiah have taught in the present day in which you and I live in, 
to pray otherwise, differently. I will read this to you in a moment. Turn to Psalm 109 for a moment and listen to what we read there, beloved brothers and sisters. This is amazing when we read such a, 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 a psalm where the psalmist is praying so strongly against his enemies. Notice what it says in verse 8. Let his days be few. And let another take his office. Let his children be fatherless and his wife a widow. Let his children be continually vagabonds and beg. Let them seek their bread also out of their desolate places. Let the extortioner catch all that he hath and let the stranger spoil his labor. From verse 8 all the way to verse 20, this is a verses that are called you might say the psalmist is praying against his enemies and wishing them judgment. Now let me remind you that they will be judged by God, but the, the psalmist, in light of the days in which he lived, in the days under the law, per se, in a day in which uh, uh, the law was active in a sense of the judgment of God upon anyone who failed uh, to submit to the law of God. These were days in which such a prayer was uh, prayed by the psalmist. Now turn with me to Matthew for a moment. I will come back to the psalm. But you notice what we read in the Gospel of uh, Matthew. In Matthew, we read specifically in the Sermon on the Mount, when the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, was asked by his disciples to teach them to uh, pray. And you remember how the Lord have taught the disciples concerning a uh, prayer. And you notice, I'll just read just a few verses in chapter uh, 5 and verse 43. You remember what Yeshua said to the disciples, to the Talmudim, uh, that followed him. These are Jewish disciples still before the Messiah died. He's, he's teaching them now in anticipation for, this, for his death and burial, resurrection, and he's, uh, he's telling them, it, you, you remember he says, ye have heard that it had been said, verse 43, thou shalt love thy neighbor, but also hate thine enemies. Then verse 44 and 45, but I said to you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray, listen to them, pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That ye may be children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and he sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. In other words, when Yeshua finally came and was born to the Virgin Miriam and he lived here in his life here in a, a perfect way, he taught his disciples, his Talmudim, now not to pray uh, wishing that a judgment will come upon their enemies, but the opposite, to love their enemies, to bless them that curse they curse you to pray for them that despisefully use you and persecute you. Now, beloved brothers and sisters, this is beyond us because humanly speaking, when somebody wrongs us, we want immediately to wish them ill, to wish them wrong. But that's the standard that our Lord Yeshua, the Messiah, have given uh, unto us in, in order that we to to look at him as our example who suffered for sin, and to see the way he lived in his life. That is not a, a natural to us. Naturally speaking, in the, with the, de the desire of the flesh, we fail oftentimes to rise up to the standard that the Lord had called us to walk in. But now go back to our chapter, to Psalm 5, and I want you to notice that David is praying he has actually two requests from God. Request number one is found in verses one to seven. And request number two is found from verses eight to twelve. Two requests. 
You notice actually, in the two requests, the first one, he began with the word Giv'ir. Giv'ir in Hebrew is uh, Hakshiv. Hakshiv, in other words, Giv'ir, listen to what I am asking you, O oh my God. Then in the second request, in verse 8, he's asking God to lead him, lead me. And the word lead me, it is the uh, Hebrew word nacheni, or hancheni. Lead me, in other words, lead me so I can live my life for you, God. That was the desire of uh, David uh, the, the, in his lifetime as he was praying his prayer. And you know the word for ha'azina, ha'akshiv, give ear, is found many times in the Psalms. In Psalm 10, thou, Lord, has heard the desire of the humble. Verse, Psalm 17, verse 1, O Lord, attend unto my cry. In Psalm 55 and verse 2, attend unto me. In other words, hakshiv, hear me. Psalm 66, uh, he has attended to the voice of my prayer. These are all... A, 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 the same call, the same request, the same prayer. Psalm 86, verse 6, and attend to the voice of my supplication. Psalm 142, attend unto my cry. David is seeking the Lord to attend unto his cry. And so notice now, in verses 1 to verse 7, David have a request from God, and you notice, first of all, the request is that God will hear his voice, verses 1, 2, and 3. Notice this, I'm reading, a hearken, give ear unto my words, O Lord, and consider my meditation. Notice in verse 2, hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God, for thou for unto thee will I pray. So David is praying to the Lord and he desires that God will hear him. Isn't it true? We just earlier spoke about the fact that at times things happen in our lives that we are not, we, we can sometimes cannot bear them because they are so challenging in the life of God's people. And yet, beloved brothers and sisters, the psalmist is turning to God, requesting from God to listen to him, to give, uh, to, to give a attention to the call, to the cry uh, of the, the psalmist of Israel. And that's, by the way, with respect to the future, during the day of the tribulation, David is really expressing the voice of the people of Israel during Jacob's trouble. When they will be persecuted in the days of the tribulation, persecution such as they have never experienced before, where Satan and the Antichrist and the false prophet and the whole unregenerated world will seek to destroy the Jewish people during the, specifically during the tribulation days. And yet God will come in and he will redeem his people Israel and deliver them out of the the hands of their enemies. So David seeking God to give ear, to attend unto his meditation and to hearken unto the voice of his cry. And you notice, uh, my God, he says, for unto thee will I pray. You know, beloved brothers and sisters, God desire that we will take the time and cry to him in prayer. Wherever we are, whatever the situation is in our lives, we are called to talk to the Lord, to come to the Lord in prayer. You remember what we read in Peter, casting all your cares upon him because he cares for us. God knows our challenges. He knows our experiences. He knows our, our sorrows and our trials in our life. And so prayer is essential in the life of God's people. That's why, notice now in verse 3, after he's seeking from the Lord to give ear, 
and to consider the meditation, to hearken unto the voice of his cry, because to him uh, the, uh, David is crying to the Lord, to God. Then you notice what he says in verse 3. David was actually praying this prayer very early in the morning. It is one of his early morning prayers. It says, My voice you shall hear in the morning. O Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee, and I will look up. You know, it is amazing to see how David began his day by praying to the Lord in the morning. In other words, he did not leave his home. He did not uh, do anything else before he first of all directed his prayer unto his God. That is a healthy practice that all of us need to learn in our life. I remember years ago when I uh, uh, attended a, a conference uh, with a few believers, and it was so moving into my heart when uh, I have remained in a, in a room with uh, one of the other brothers. We shared a room in that particular conference. And I'll never forget that the first thing that this dear brother do, he slid out of his bed and he went on his knees. And he, before even he spoke with me, before he brushed his teeth, before he washed his face, he just went on his knees and he prayed unto the Lord. I thought it was so uh, uh, precious, such an amazing example. And it reminds us of our own forefathers. The people of Israel who were uh, uh, taught us to, to, to pray to begin the day like my grandfather in Jerusalem when his name was Yosef. He began the day, Yosef, knocking on the, on the windows in his, in his, uh, in his home, a uh, shacharit, morning prayer, and he was going the first thing he began, went to the synagogue, and that was the first thing that he did in the morning. He began the day with his God, with the God of our fathers. Doesn't it remind us of the Lord Yeshua? Turn with me to Mark chapter 1 for a moment, please. In Mark chapter 1, it reminds us of the practice that Yeshua the Messiah himself had in his own life. In Mark chapter 1 and verse 35, notice that. Mark 1, 35, and in the morning, Baboker in Hebrew, in the morning, rising up great while before day, he, this is Yeshua, Jesus, he went out and he departed unto a solitary place and there prayed. And there he prayed. What a lesson, beloved uh, brothers and sisters, we learn from our Lord Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah. And again, no wonder, David is but a miniature picture of Yeshua the Messiah. David is a picture of our Lord Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah. But what an example. In the morning, in the morning, O Lord, he said, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee, and I will look up. Notice the another thing that is very interesting in this verse 3. It says, My voice shall thou hear. My voice shall thou hear. I don't know if you can find, uh, uh, turn with me to the book of uh, <coughs> Shir Hashirim, the Song of Solomon. Just turn there for a moment. And you notice what we read in chapter 2. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, it's, a, a, it's an expression of love. Because God loved us as the king of Israel loved this, uh, the, the, the uh, Shunammite, Shunammite, we find out here in verse 14 uh, uh, that uh, it says in verse 14, my, O my dove, Thou art in the uh, cleft of the rocks, uh, in the secret places of the uh, stairs. Uh, let me see thy countenance. Let me hear thy voice. 
for sweet is thy voice, and thy countenance is comely. You see, God wants to hear our voices. He wants, he delight to hear the voice of his people. And that's why David said in verses 1, 2, and 3, specifically in verse 3, My voice thou shalt hear in the morning. And so I would encourage you, beloved brothers and sisters, to turn in prayer in the morning. All of us need that. It is for all God's children, all God's people. God delight to hear our voice. He delight to hear our prayer, casting all our cares upon him because our Mashiach, Yeshua, our God, cares for us. So notice now, back to our psalm, in verses uh, uh, 4, 5, and 6, here's the reason why did David come to God to his Lord in prayer. Well, notice it says the reason uh, for the request that God will hear his prayer, that the Lord will hear his voice, is found in verses 4, 5, and 6. First of all, God has no pleasure in wickedness. Apparently, David experienced suffering. Some relate this psalm to uh, 2 Samuel chapter 15 where David's son Avshalom pursued after David. And the king had to leave the city of Yerushalayim. Avshalom, his son, stole the hearts of the rest of the nation of Israel. And David knew that some of them wished evil for him, and David fled. And as he was fleeing, going down from Mount Moriah, crossing the Kidron Valley and going up towards Mount Olive, David was rising, going and weeping and weeping because of what had happened to him. And he had many enemies around among the, the, the nation surrounding Israel who sought to, to do harm to David. And so David was crying to the Lord, verse 4, he's saying, why? Notice that verse 4, for thou art a God that has a, 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 that has a not pleasure in wickedness. Neither shall evil dwell with thee. In other words, he knew that God hates sin, though he loved the sinner. He hates wickedness. And it was wickedness to steal the heart of the people from David the king. It was wickedness to oppose David from the nations around him. It was wickedness to to seek the, 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 uh, the evil against the king of Israel, David. And so David praying, the reason that he's praying, because God is a holy God, and he is the one that will ultimately do justice. And we, we too, when we are wronged in our lives, we have to turn to the Lord in prayer, because God knows everything. You remember what the Lord says, vengeance is mine, I will repay. For the believer today, we are not to bring evil against evil, but we are to turn to our God in prayer, because he will deal with everything. Easily said, isn't it? It is another thing to act upon it, because in the flesh in us, the sin nature in us want to react. And so we learn the reason that David prayed is because he knew that God is, has no pleasure in wickedness and he will have no evil within him. There is no evil that come to the presence of the Lord. This is amazing. God is a holy God and he cannot look upon sin. And you know this, beloved brothers and sisters, if you can find the book of Habakkuk for a moment, go to the prophet Habakkuk. You will notice what the prophet Habakkuk in his prayer to the Lord he is saying. When, uh, when Habakkuk uh, asked the Lord to help him, to help our people of Israel in the days uh, 
in the difficult days because there were some unjust and some were just and the unjust one did wrong to the just one and then God says no no Habakkuk don't worry I will bring the Babylonian the Chaldeans against all Israel and they will judge Israel and David had been perplexed because he didn't understand God how can you do that you are bringing a worse nation than your own nation against your nation and then notice what David says in verse 13. For thou art of a purer eye than to behold evil, and you cannot look on iniquity. Tahor enaim mirot umehabit el amal lo tuchal in the Hebrew text. You are so holy, God. You are of a purer eye than to behold evil, and you cannot look on iniquity. God is holy. And holy does not mean that one has a halo over his head. It means that God is set apart from sin. And when sin comes, God will have to judge it. And that's why he judged it in the person of our Lord, Yeshua the Messiah. Your sins and my sins that deserve to be judged, someone was judged on our behalf. This is Yeshua, Jesus, our Messiah. So David is crying to the Lord and he's saying to him, he says, you cannot look upon all this evil. And then notice that Psalm 5, 9, verse 5, he says about those that are acting in an evil way, David's enemy, he said, the, 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 the foolish shall not stand in thy sight, verse 5, the foolish shall not stand in thy sight, thou hatest the workers of iniquity. The word for foolish is the Hebrew word holelim. The word workers of iniquity is the Hebrew word poalei avon. They or, or poale aven, they are constantly uh, doing that which is evil against the Lord. And notice verse 6, we read, The Lord shall abhor the bloody and the deceitful men. Thou shalt destroy them that speak, listen, the Lord will abhor the bloody and the deceitful men. In other words, judgment will come, beloved brothers and sisters, and God will ultimately will judge uh, those that are opposing him. And David, in his first prayer, in his first request from the Lord, he wanted the Lord to hear his voice because he was in pain, he was in sorrow, he had trial in his life, he was opposed by his enemies, and he turned to God and he asking him to listen, to listen to his cry. And the reason is, the answer, of course, uh, the reason is because God is holy. He cannot look upon sin. And ultimately, everyone that, that does unrighteously will ultimately be judged by God. And now notice verse 7. Here's the personal response of David. David is now, after he prayed to God, after he shared with him, after he express the fact that God is holy and cannot look upon sin. In verse 7, he says, As for me, I'm going to be different. As for me, I will come into thy house in a multitude of thy mercy, and, I, and in thy fear will I worship toward thy holy temple. In other words, David did not say that he is good and they are bad. What he said, as for me, as a sinner, I'm coming to you on the ground of your mercy. I need your mercy, O oh God. I don't come on the ground of being good. We'll find us later on when David has sinned against Bathsheba and then allowed Uriah the Hittite to die. David have confessed this, that sin before the Lord. David was a sinful person like us all. But David said, I am coming to you, God, verse 7, notice that, as for me, I will come into thy, to thy house in a multitude of thy mercy. Not than a multitude of my goodness or my, my works, but on the ground of your mercy. And then he continues, <clears throat> and in your fear I will worship towards 
thy holy mountain. Notice we have twice the expression, thy house and thy holy temple. Uh, in the in the Hebrew text, it's uh, it's beautiful because both of these words uh, has to do with the the the, the word is beitecha. God's house is the temple, and heichal kotshecha, heichal kotshecha. This is the the temple, Beit Hamikdash, where God was dwelling there in the midst of the cherubim in the holy of holies. And the cherubim were guarding the holiness of God, where the high priest could only enter in once a year on Yom HaKippurim, because the, the God is holy. And David is saying, wherever I will be, I will face towards your holy temple, towards your house, O God. And he, David had been sensitive to where God was dwelling in the midst of the cherubim, in the Holy of Holies, in the temple, in the city of Jerusalem. So now, beloved brothers and sisters, after David was praying and having the first request from God, God, give ear, ha'azin li, give ear to my prayer. Then you notice in the next verses, in verses 8 to 12, David is now asking from the Lord to lead him. First to hear me, then to lead me. And it's also interesting because in the Hebrew scriptures, in the book of Psalms, the Tehillim, many times we find the psalmist of Israel desiring that the Lord will lead them. In Psalm 25 and verse 5, Lead me in thy truth. In Psalm 27, verse 11, O Lord, he says, Lead me in a plain path. In Psalm 31, and verse 3, Therefore thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. In Psalm 43, and verse 3, the psalmist says, Let them uh, uh, lead me, in other words, in the, in the light of thy truth, that your truth will lead me. In Psalm 60 and verse 9, who will lead me? In other words, he's speaking about the Lord leading and the leading of the Lord. Of course, sometime we have to be careful not to be led by the enemies of God's people. We have to be careful to be led by the Lord. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, said the psalmist in Psalm 61 and verse 2. Who will lead me? And in other verses, like Psalm 139, even there shall thy hand will lead me. God leads us in every, wherever we are, he leads his own people who seek to find a, a help in him. In fact, we read in Psalm uh, 143 and verse 10, Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. And so, beloved brothers and sisters, as we are moving to the second section of Psalm 5, I would like just to highlight a few thoughts here that is very precious to us all. May the Lord help us. And actually, may the Lord lead us, every one of us individually in our personal life, Every one of us as a family and also as a local a group of believers, we need to be led by the, the, the Lord, to be led by the Spirit of God. You remember about Yeshua the Messiah, we read that when he had gone into the wilderness, he was led by the Spirit. He, was, he allowed the Holy Spirit of God to lead him. And we need to allow God to lead us. We are to be led also by the person of the Holy Spirit of God. And so notice that. Again now, we have the request to be led by the Lord in verse 8. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of mine enemies. Make thy way straight before my face. What do you do? What do I do when we have enemies in our life? Maybe enemies uh, where we work. 
Maybe enemies around us, those that are opposing us, maybe opposing our faith in the person and the work of Yeshua HaMashiach. What do we do? We are to go to the Lord in prayer, just the same as David, who first came and asking God to give ear, verses 1 to 7, to hear him, and now also to ask God to lead we need the Lord to lead us. And so notice in verse <clears throat> in verse 8, the request to be led by the Lord is really David wanted to be led in God's righteousness because enemies are against him. What to do? How to handle? So he says, lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of mine enemies. Make thy way straight before my face. I don't know how to handle the situation. I have enemies. I have those who oppose me. How do I go about, continue on? I have opposition. I have enemies against me. What shall I do? Lord, please lead me. Lead me. A, 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 a verse that come immediately to my mind a, that we have a little bit later on. I believe it is in Psalm um, if you turn with me to a little bit later in the psalm, I believe it is Psalm 139. Notice that, Psalm 139, verse 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And if there be any wicked way in me, and see if there is any wicked may, way in me, and lead me. Here it is again. Lead me in a way everlasting. In other words, God, I want you to search me, to see if there is any wickedness in me. In other words, if I'm going wrong, Lord, please restore me to fellowship with you and lead me in the right way. And you see, David says this in verse 8, because of his enemies. And you know, beloved brothers and sisters, do you know that you and I have three enemies? The closest enemy is the flesh. The flesh in us, Paul says in Romans 7, I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. This is a very hard thing to learn, isn't it? We often think that our flesh is pretty good. But Paul was honest. Shaul was honest. He said, I know that in me, Shaul Paul, the apostle, the shaliach, that in me that it is my flesh dwelleth no good thing. He didn't say there is some bad things and some good thing. No. He says, no good thing. That's enemy number one. It's the closest enemy. We have to live with that enemy. We get up in the morning with that enemy. We go to work with this enemy. We even go to bed to sleep with this enemy every day. That's why we are often are exhorted to walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. But we also have another enemy, the world. Love not the world, not the things that are in the world, for all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And it is not of the Father. The world, the system of this world is headed up by Satan. And then, of course, the third enemy is none else but Satan himself. He shoots darts at us, and he's trying to hinder us from spiritual growth. He's attacking God's people. In fact, Paul in Ephesians 6 says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against wickedness in the heavenly, in the heavenly realm. Satan is the accuser of the brethren. He hates God's people. So we have three enemies that we deal with them every day in our life. And they will never leave us until we are going to the presence of the Lord. You know, as long that we are here in this world, we will have to constantly deal with these enemies. And that's why we need God's help. And that's why we need the leading of the Lord. And so in verse 8, he says, lead me. 
Lead me, O Lord, for thy righteousness, or in thy righteousness, because of mine enemies make thy way straight before my face. And so now that he had expressed this before uh, the Lord, he is now in verses uh, 9 and 10, he gives him the reason for his request. And here is where we read that uh, what I've expressed earlier, the imprecatory a prayer, a prayer that is against the enemies of God's people, which David had prayed, and it's one of these quite a few imprecatory prayer of judgment upon the enemies of God's people. And so notice the reason. And he gives us in verse 9 and 10, praying for judgment upon one's enemies, invoking evil upon the enemies. He says in verse 9, For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is very wickedness. Their throat is an open sepulcher. They flatter with their tongue. Destroy thou them, O God, let them fall by their own counsel, cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against thee. So the reason was because David had these enemies that opposed him and harmed him, and apparently he must have been in such a state in which he was praying evil to fall upon his own enemies. Now again, we learn already from the uh, Gospel of Matthew that Yeshua the Messiah taught us this very important lesson. And you and I cannot pray this prayer like this today. We are called to pray differently. I say unto you, love your enemies even though it's very difficult, beloved brothers and sisters. Bless them that curse you. and Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh the sun to rise on the evil and on the good, and he sends rain on the just and on the unjust. What an amazing standard. Humanly speaking, it is impossible, beloved brothers and sisters, but with the help of the Lord, He is able to help us to do so. So now just to close this psalm, in verses 11 and 12, again, as he had a personal decision in verse 7, where he said, uh, we, uh, after he, gave, he cried to, uh, to God to give ear, in verse 7 he said, As for me, I will come into thy house in a multitude of thy mercy. Now notice in verse 11 and 12, here is again, he is now making a decision, and he is speaking for himself and for all those that put their trust in the Lord. That's including you and I. What is the decision? What is the response, the personal decision that David made and all of us need to make? Verse 11 and 12. Let all those that put the trust in thee, in God, rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy. Because thou had defended them, let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. You remember like Paul said, Shaul Paul says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, Rejoice. Let your moderation be made known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. He's nigh. Yeshua is not far from us. Even though it sounds sound like he's very far at time, but he's nigh. He's close to us. And you notice he used the three Hebrew words here, to rejoice, rejoice in verse 11, joy in verse 11, be joyful in verse 11. The Hebrew word yismechu or simchu, ranenu, and altsu. Three Hebrew words to express the very same thing. To rejoice. To be joyful. How can you rejoice when there is so much 
trial, this is only it can be when we wait on the Lord and trust in Him. And so he concludes the psalm, For thou, O Lord, notice that the Lord will bless those that will follow after Him. For thou, O Lord, will bless the righteous with favor. Wilt thou compass him as with a shield? The Lord will protect His own, and the Lord will show favor. He have approved every time when we do the will of the Lord, he is approved of that. Every time we are pleasing him and we trust him, it is he is approved of it and he promised to protect his own people as we are going through challenges here in this world. And so beloved brothers and sisters, may the Lord help us Whenever you and I would go through trials and difficulties like David, we are to pray, to ask the Lord to pray that he will hear our prayer, but also to ask him to lead us. And he is able, he will, he is a faithful God, and we can be encouraged by the word of the Lord. Well, may the Lord bless his word and may the shalom the shalom of god will be upon us all as we are studying together uh, the word of god will god bless you my dear brothers and sisters